three, two. Doctor? Oh, uh, you were discussing your identity crisis, uh, Zero. Oh, yeah, Doc. It's just that I can't stand being a nothing. Do you know what it's like being number zero? Hmm. Having nicknames like Zip or Zilch or Nil? It's awful. Oh, no, steady. Yeah. Nobody wants me. What kind of football or baseball team wants to have zero as its score? No one. I'm just a nothing. Well, no, no. What about scores like, like 30 and 40? And numbers like 500 and 10,000 now, those all have zeros in them and they mean a great deal. Yeah, but without that first number, I'd mean nothing to them. What would 10,000 be without number one? <laughs> nothing. Just a bunch of zeros hanging around with nothing to do. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. What about a rocket countdown? Now, you're the last most important number. No, I'm not, Doc. Think about it. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, lift up! At a time when I could do the most good, when I'm in the most important position, I'm the place with lift up! And while we're at it, do you know what it's like having to spend your life next to the number one? Well, would you like to talk about it? <laughs> oh! Oh! Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's all right, it's all right. I've, I've got some more. Yes? Oh, yeah. Uh, number one. So important. Yes. Such a big deal. Oh. Looking out for number one. Number one son. One singular sensation. Every little step he takes. Everyone wants to be number one and nobody wants to be zero. Calm now, don't cry. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> Think about it, Doc. Team me up with any number. And what do you get, huh? huh? Zero plus four? Uh, equals uh, four. Twenty-five plus zero? It equals uh, twenty-five. Yes, 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 I see what you mean. <laughs> I'm zero, and I have nobody. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wait, wait, I've got it. What about decimal numbers? Like five hundredths or, or, or four thousands? Now, in those cases, you come before the other numbers. Yeah, and make them smaller. One hundredth is less than one tenth. Two hundredths is less than two tenths. Five hundredths is less than five tenths. In fact, the more zeros in front of the number, the smaller it gets. I'm all right. And in those cases, when I do come first, I have to be behind a, a, a dot, a decimal point, the ultimate insult. That's it. I'm going to end it all. I don't want to live anymore. Why live when you don't count? <laughs> and you can't even open a window. Wait, wait, that's uh, it. What? You said count. I said don't count. No, no, but you do count. Look here. Without you, we wouldn't be able to write numbers the way we do. <laughs> We'd have no 10. Many of the larger numbers are dependent upon your being there. What would 100 be without you? Or, or 20,000 or 50 million? Yes, it's true. They make the number, but you, you make it size. They'd be nothing without you. Well, considerably less. They need you. Gosh. Gosh, Doc. Hmm? I never looked at that way before. I guess I am important, aren't I? You... Betcha. And what about multiplication? Zero times any number is zero. Think of the power you wield over all the other numbers. Four times zero equals zero. Zero times seven equals zero. Two hundred and ninety times zero equals zero. Multiplied by you, they become you. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. I feel it. 
important now. Oh, one other thing. In tennis, when a player has zero, it's called love. In tennis, you are love. Tennis? Anyone? <laughs> oh, I feel so good when I can help. Ah, yes, who are you? Your next patient. <laughs> Hello, I'm Shirley Slammer. Coming soon on matinee movie, the motion picture classic, Carta Blanca. The story of two men and a woman divided by romance, war, and a French customs official who knows how to play guess your weight. This much of the show is over. Don't despair. There's this much yet to come. Hi, it's Swell working at Harry's Hamburger Haven, where this week, Harry is offering 0.7 more French fries than all the other guys. And believe me... Ah, oh, God, 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 I don't like that 0.7. What does that mean? The 7 is pointy? What? Oh, gee, I don't know. I just read what they write. It means that Harry is selling more French fries than his competition. Please hold still. More, huh? How oh, much more? I have a little makeup on the... 0.7 more. Well, I tell you, I still don't like it. I mean, it sounds like it's a very sharp number. The kids could get hurt. Come on, give me something else. Well, how about 7 tenths? How about 7 tenths more French fries? Ooh, that's got a nice ring to it. Yeah, there's something organic. But does it here. mean the same thing as 0.7? Oh, yes, it means exactly the same thing. 0.7 and 7 tenths are equal. Fantastic. Look, we're running out of time. Let's go. Uh, All right, now, have you got uh, this? Yeah, I think I must. Okay, now, this time you're going to elucidate 7 tenths more french fries instead of 0.7 we've oh. very short on time are you okay, ready just give me a moment i'll be off book yes. a seven ten Let's seven ten seven three. okay i got it all right huh? harry's hamburger haven a uh, take two lights camera hi it's swell working at harry's hamburger haven where this week harry is offering seven tenths more french fries
surprised than all the other guys, and believe me... God, 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 no, I Bernie, Bernie. More if you no, want. no, no, you know, I don't like that seventh dance either. I mean, really, can't you get me some writers that know how to sell from the heart, baby? Well, Samuel, the kids upstairs have come up with one more idea which we might use. Well, come on, babes, out with it. How about... 70%. We could say 70% more French fries. 70%. Now you are talking. Now 70%, that's a lot. No, they mean the same thing. They do? Absolutely. 70% and 7 tenths are equal, Samuel. 70%. Now that hits home. Let's go. 70% more French fries. We're very short on time okay. now. Have you got this? Uh, yeah, I okay. think so. This you know, time... I really appreciate this chance. If Let's there's go. Ever... We're losing now, light. Now this time you're going to say 70% okay. more French fries. 70%. Okay. Harry's Hamburger Haven. Take three lights, camera. Action! Hi, it's Swell working at Harry's Hamburger Haven where I just learned something. Look here, 70% means the same thing as 7 tenths, and 7 tenths and 70% mean the same thing as 0.7. <laughs> That's really amazing. Alfie. Uh, yes, sir. Do you have a last name? Uh, yes, sir. It's Fontaine, like in your boss, Mr. Fontaine. You're wonderful. Uh, thank you very much. Ready? You and Ludlow better get on board. But Nick... There's no but Nick's about it. Ludlow, you go first. Monsieur Louis Letourneau, at your service. Your passport, please. Ludlow Novak. Very good. And what is your weight, please? Why do you want to know that? The Lisbon plane can only carry so many pounds, monsieur. Otherwise, the silver bird cannot get off the ground. And you will never beat Carta Blanca. Bye-bye. So... The upper limit is 2,500 pounds. That is all she can carry. The passenger's luggage we figure to be about 300 pounds. So, 300 from 2,500, we are left with 2,200 pounds. Now, the crew and 10 passengers have already boarded the plane. We have rounded up their combined weight to 1,700 pounds. La, subtract that from 2,200 and we are left with, voila, 500 pounds. Now, monsieur. What is your weight? I don't know. There are no scales in Carte Blanca. That's funny. I came to Carte Blanca for the scales. Then you were misinformed. Monsieur. Well, I'll have to guess. 143 pounds. <gasps> Monsieur. Well, all right, all right. 167 pounds. That's more like it. We'll round that up to 170 pounds. Subtract that from 500 and we are left with... 330 pounds. Madame, your papers, please. Mrs. Ludlow Novak. Oh, Nick. You've got to listen to me. If that plane leaves the ground and you're not on it, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. Look, I'm no good at being noble. Madame but... Novak, your papers are in order. And now, your weight, please. That's rather personal, isn't it? Alas, yes, it is, but my lips are sealed, and the audience will keep it a secret. Very well. Uh, um, 118 pounds. Oh, madame. Must you make a scene? 123. Hmm. We'll round that up to 130 pounds. Oh, why round up? To 130. Why not round down to 120? Why? Why make things heavier than they really are? To be on the safe side, Didon Coco. We are concerned that the plane might be overloaded, so we are rounding numbers up. Better safe than crunchy. Vive les calories. La. We subtract 130 from 330. We are left with 200 pounds. Thank you so much. I'm so pleased. All part of the job, madame. Oh, Nick. The problems of three little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Nick, last night. Last night we said a great many things. Shh, Nick. 
Be quiet for heaven's sake. Why? Nicholas died. Ludlow and I bought you an extra ticket. You can come with us. You did? Mm. Swell. He is looking at you, kid. Not so fast, Porky. What do you mean? What is your weight, my friend? Oh, I don't know. 170, 180. Be honest. Okay, okay. I weigh 223 pounds. <gasps> but it's all this rich French food. Who would have known a pair of frog legs could have had so many calories? And besides, there's nothing else to do in Carta Blanca. The movie theater's been playing the case of the Maltese pigeon for the last three weeks. Yes, your Nick. I'm afraid I must round your weight up to 230 pounds. And that is above the upper limit. There are only 200 pounds left. I'm sorry, Monsieur Nick, but orders are orders. Out of concern for the plane and the passengers, I cannot allow you to board. Well. Oh, Nick, I begged you not to eat the chocolate quiche. That's OK, sweetheart. We'll always have Paris. Paris? I've never been to Paris. Weren't you previously Sally Sue Sussman from my senior class cruise to France? Uh, no. Uh, I'm the former Elsie Crumb, Olympic bronze medalist, mother of three. Then I'm afraid I've made a terrible mistake. Whoever you are, goodbye. Sorry, mon ami, you must feel terrible. Just a little hungry. You know, there is a free French ice cream parlor in Brazzaville. I might be induced to phone ahead and order two egg creams and two banana splits. And a chocolate clair? But of course. Louis, it looks like this could be the beginning of a beautifully fattening French. Confusion, sir. The sun rose in the east and set in the west. Aha! It did that yesterday. Yes, General, sir. Well, watch for any changes. Yes, General, sir. Yes, General, sir. Yes, General, sir. You always say it the same. Can't you say it any differently? Yes, General, sir. That's an order, keep out. Yes, General, sir. Uh, yes, sir, General. Sir, General, yes. Sir, yes, General. General, yes, sir. General, sir, yes. Very impressive, Keep Out. How many was that? Six, sir. Three words, General, yes, and sir. And there's six different ways to put them together. Yes, General, sir. Any other way? Not with those three words, General Confusion, sir. Oh, what if the three words were? Apple, pear, and orange. How many different ways can you arrange them? Six, sir. Apple, pear, orange. Apple, orange, pear. Orange, pear, apple. Orange, apple, pear. Pear, apple, orange. Pear, orange, apple. Very good, keep out. Now. I have one more order. Yes, General, sir. Stop calling me sir. I'm a ma'am. Yes, General, ma'am, sir. <laughs> The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names have been made up, but the problems are real. It was 9.43 a.m. We were working on the case of the missing baseball. My partner is George Franklin. The boss is Thad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We decided to look at the last scene from yesterday's show to refresh our memories. Hello, ma'am. This is George Franklin, MathNet. Ma'am, when you went back into the house for your shopping list, did you close the door? You didn't? 
If the ball was hit then, it must be in the house. Ma'am, we're coming back to see you. We have reason to believe the baseball is in your house. Mind if we look around? Not really, but that's easier said than done. How's that, ma'am? My house has been stolen. Tuesday, 10.22 a.m. We decided to question Mrs. McGregor about her problem. Morning, ma'am. How are you? I've been better. Wipe your feet and get off my sidewalk. Want to tell us what happened, ma'am? I went over to my sister's house last night to watch the Dodger game. You have a sister living in Cincinnati? On television. I spent the night there, came back this morning, and my house was gone. Did you notice anything unusual yesterday before you left? No, nothing. Well, wait. There was a man. A man? Yes, you know. A man, deep voice, has to shave. Yes, ma'am, but where was he? Sitting in a pickup truck across the street, wearing glasses. I didn't think too much about it at the time. There have been a lot of strange ducks around here lately. How's that? Well, for the past six months, people have been pestering me, trying to buy my house, rent it, rent a room. Well, I'm sick of it. I told them I wouldn't rent and I wouldn't sell. That's why I put up all those signs. Guess I missed one, though. How's that, ma'am? Should have put one up that said, do not steal house. 10.49 and a half a.m. We needed more facts, and we needed to figure out what those facts meant. I figure there are three ways to dispose of a house, Kate. Uh-huh, that's about right. They could blow it up? Yeah, but there would be a lot of debris around. Right. Or someone could have dismantled it. it. Takes a long time to dismantle a house, George. So that's out. The third way is to jack it up, put it on a flatbed truck, and haul it away. And if that's how they did it, someone must have seen or heard something. We decided to question the neighbors to see if they saw or heard anything suspicious. Morning, sir. We're Matt Fed, working on the case of the missing baseball. I wonder if you could help us out. I'm not very good at finding missing baseball. Yes, sir. I found a missing golf ball once. Uh-huh. It was in the weeds. Yes, sir. It was, you know, round. Most of them are. What a day that was. Last night, sir, were you home and did you see or hear anything unusual? Yeah, I was home. I was watching a Dodger game. You live in Cincinnati? No, it was on television. Yes, sir. Did you hear anything suspicious? Like what? Oh, maybe a house being stolen? No, nothing like that. There was one thing, though. Yes, sir. In the 14th inning of the ball game, my TV went on the fritz. You know, couldn't see a picture. How long did that last? Not very long. Dodgers had two men on, nobody out. Next thing I know, the Reds are batting in the last of the 14th. Funny game, baseball. It's a game of inches. Now, if they trucked the house away, the truck would have left tracks. I don't see any. Maybe they put ramps down to cover their tracks. Maybe. Let's get the facts. Hello, ma'am. Any progress? No, ma'am. That baseball is just as missing as it ever was. Mind if we take another look around? Be my guest. Uh-huh. Ever seen these glasses, ma'am? Nope. Oh, wait. They look like the glasses that man I was telling you about was wearing. Deep voice. Shave. That's right. But what would they be doing here? We'll have the boys in the lab run a make on them. Come on, George, let's roll. Yeah, but... No. 4.43 p.m. George sent the glasses to the lab to check the prescription and to see if they could help us identify the owner while I went back over the facts. Is that the lab? No, it was Martha. She needs more peppers for the meatloaf. You want to stop for dinner tonight, Kate? Maybe. What are you having? I don't know. She didn't say. She just said to stop on the way home for peppers for the meatloaf. Maybe you're having meatloaf. Oh, I doubt it. How's that? It's difficult to make. She's out of peppers. Uh-huh. Let's go over the facts, George, and see if we can make some sense out of them. The ball was lost yesterday. It probably bounced off the sign. Right. Ricocheted over to Mrs. McGregor's porch, probably right through the open door, so it's inside the house. Right. But the house is missing. What does that tell us? Somebody wanted that baseball real bad. What else? We find the house. We got the ball. <sighs> okay. The house wasn't blown up. We know that. Right. It wasn't dismantled either. And we know that it could have been hauled away in a truck. So what does that leave us? What's the only possible answer? I've got it. Good. The house is still there. What's the only other answer? I don't know. MathNet, Monday. Oh, hello, Howie. No, no luck on the missing ball yet. <sighs> we'll keep in touch. I understand. Howie? Yeah. His dad's due back in three days. If we don't find that missing baseball... Yeah. His father's going to turn him inside out. Stymied, Kate. The house with the ball in it is gone. It's just gone. It couldn't have just flown away. Or could it? You guys ready to cheer him on? Yeah! Yeah! All right, and 
Red, go. 56 red. Answer the phone, George. Mapnet. Who? Scarlet. No, this isn't Kate. It's frankly Scarlet, and I don't give... Oh, General Scarlet. 100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. Corporate funding is provided by IBM. At IBM, we believe education is the key to the future. We are pleased to help support Square One TV as an innovative way to introduce young people to the exciting world of mathematics. And stop. Thanks for watching Cable in the Classroom. Up next, it's Nadia. Hey, Bert, are you ready for our play date? Yeah, I think so, honey. Um, is everybody here? Uh, I am here. Hi, Prairie Dawn. Where, where's Grover? Grover. Oh, Grover, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm com Whoa! Uh oh. <laughs> Present. Well, honey, that's everyone. Well, wait a second, Bert. We're missing someone. Hmm? Oh, of course we are! You! Noggin presents a brand new way to sesame. Play with me, sesame! The show where your kid sings, draws, flicks, and plays with the Muppets. So come play with us every day at 7.30 a.m. Eastern and 9 a.m. Eastern and Pacific. Only on Noggin. Play with me!